this uh, conversation tonight will be recorded and it's gonna be uploaded onto our city YouTube channel. I wanna start off with a quick introduction of our team. You have the city managers team with us tonight. Uh, as we have the city manager, Armini Chaparian, the uh, assistant to the city manager, Tamara Bins, and our management analyst, Mary Duregian, here tonight. We also have a couple members of our city council, Councilman Donovan and Councilwoman Mahmoud, and a number of our executive team. So thank you again for joining us as well as the community members and the residents here tonight. Next slide, please. So the uh, impetus of this conversation tonight is really hosting a community input session on the city's very many commissions and uh, ad hoc committees and boards and giving us a good starting point in uh, providing some informational background to the city council in a few weeks uh, for a council study session on commissions. Uh, so we want to recognize the impact of our city commissions. Um, and in doing that, we're starting off with analyzing our public meetings and hopefully getting to a place where we can provide a recommendation to the city council which includes some best practices of other cities in our area. The point of this exercise is to be able to become more effective and efficient in furthering the priorities of the city council and our community, considering the fact that we have limited capacity for staff and are facing a stretched workload. Recently, the Public Works Department went through an assessment which identified that maintaining three commissions is a challenge on existing staff and workload, and that's just one of our departments here at the city and only a few of the commissions that we currently post. Um, and so through that, we see uh, also this need to address existing commission vacancies for the city. So before we can move forward, it's really taking an, an assessment of what is working and where, where we can find some improvements, um, maybe identify some of the challenges so that we can address that moving forward as well. Part of this conversation um, and part of our efforts in addition to this listening session, this virtual listening session tonight is hosting a online survey on the city website all this week, um, as well as uh, soliciting and asking for input. Uh, if anyone doesn't feel comfortable sharing tonight and is just here to listen to the conversation, we welcome you. But if you do feel comfortable um, sharing your opinions or your thoughts or your suggestions, we thank you for that. There's always an opportunity for you to reach out to the city manager's office to provide additional thoughts or comments or have a conversation, further conversation. Uh, so I don't want you to feel like tonight is your only chance to have this conversation or that once the survey is closed on Friday, that's the end all be all for this, for this input session. Um, and so with that, we'll go ahead and move forward to the next slide. And I'm gonna turn it over to Tamara on this one. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. On the slide, we have a timeline of the steps that we're going to take as far as our listening session and the items that we are working to move towards. As you can see, back in December, staff reached out and we worked with our staff liaisons to go ahead and to solicit input and information on how all of our city um, commissions worked. On January 20th, the city manager's office put out an online survey so that we could solicit all of your feedback on our progress with the commissions. And today we are having a, one of our virtual um, like community online discussions. Our online survey is going to close on January 28th, but if you're unable to go ahead and use that survey, you can always send an email to the CM office at southpasadenaca.gov or go ahead and give us a call at the number listed there, 626-403-7210. During the, after we're done with the survey period that closes on January 28th, the city manager's office is going to go ahead and go over all of the data that we have gained. And then I do want you to note on February 23rd, we're going to have a city council study session where all of the data will be discussed in an open meeting with our city council. Again, this is a study session, not a regular council meeting. Any 
And Mary, I'll turn this one over to you. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. Nice to see um, some faces put at the name. I know I've exchanged some emails with a few of you. Um, pleasure to be here. I'm new with the city, so I'm very excited to get to know all of you. Um, as a part of this project, we um, a, a really important element of this was making sure that we were including a lot of community input opportunities. We began this by um, opening a survey on um, Google Forms, which we've sent out um, through our website, the scoop and social media. Um, I've also sent a link in the chat for whoever hasn't been able to access the survey. We've actually had um, quite a few responses. So thank you everybody for their input so far. Um, if you're able to, you can scan the QR code with your phone um, and open up the, the survey with your phone or with your computer at your convenience. Um, and this is just one of few opportunities that we're going to be um, collecting some input. That was one of the conversations we've had as the city manager's team was really having as many opportunities as possible to speak to the community, our commissioners, everybody who's um, a stakeholder in this process. So please feel free to fill out the survey. Um, and if you haven't already, um, feel free to visit our website. We have a dedicated page under commissions. Um, for this analysis project. So let's move on to the next slide. Thank you. I'll go ahead and take this slide. We're just going to go over really quickly a few housekeeping rules. As our deputy city manager mentioned, this meeting is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our city's YouTube channel and it will be also posted to our city homepage. Everyone will have a chance to speak. If you can please use the raised hand function on Zoom, staff will go ahead and give and call on you to speak. If you are not speaking, if you can do us all a favor and kindly mute yourselves until you're called to speak on. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get the discussion started with our first prompt question. Um, and I think Tamara's gonna go and call on folks just kind of depending on where her screen is showing everybody. So please utilize the raise hand function. So the first question we wanna open up to everybody today is, are there topics not covered by existing commissions or boards that you would like the city council to consider? All right. Oda, I'm gonna go ahead and call on you and I've gone ahead and turn off your mute button. Thank you. I turned my own mute button off. Can you hear me? Yes, Great. perfectly. All right. So I would like to talk about uh, the substitution for online tools for in-person meetings. The substitution is great if you're under 40, and it's terrible if you're over 60. And somewhere in between, we all struggle to communicate with the city but when we are only doing it via portals, via email or Zoom, uh, there is a lot missed in the nuances. And I believe it affects the, uh, the level of support that you think you have versus what actually the community feels about different issues. And I believe that uh, case in point is the PowerPoint that you just delivered and talked about the opportunities for outreach. That's not the same thing as outreach. For instance, when we did our own project uh, in the city, I think it's one of the largest that was passed uh, in recent times. Uh, we had in-person meetings, even though we overlap at the beginning of COVID, we were able to safely distance and outreach and take people's notes and answer them and look them eye to eye. And that's, that's a huge um, uh, gulf between trying to do it even as good as Zoom or GoToMeeting is. And, um, and uh, you know, a, a live meeting, even if you held it outside and the weather's so nice. I mean, here we are spring in January. There's really no reason why we couldn't all be gathered in the courtyard, standing six feet apart and talking about this if you were uh, concerned about COVID. Thank you, Odom. Alan? Yeah, hi, uh, good evening, everybody. I've got two comments. Uh, one, I, when I stopped by city manager's office earlier this morning, uh, Mary, I had mentioned to you and some others, this is, I believe, the third review of commissions we've had in the last five years. 
So there's, I realize we have a new city manager. We've got a lot of new staff um, in all of the departments, but it feels a little bit like been there, done that. Why are we doing this again? Uh, so I want to get that out of the way. Secondly, uh, one of the things that came up last summer or the year before as um, Black Lives Matter uh, was going about is it was pointed out we have a youth commission, we have a senior commission, we have an animal commission, we have a public arts commission, but we don't have any type of homeless or social services commission. Uh, and, and right now I know because I'm a past public safety commissioner, homeless issues kind of get addressed over there from a police law enforcement point of view, but not from a social services point of view. So I think there's an opportunity to hear to maybe, I know staff feels we have way too many commissions already, but this one might be a, a big plus for the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Bill, Kelly? Uh, thank you. Um, yes, let me uh, speak to the question directly. Uh, I think there are a number of topics that don't have a home or at least an adequate home within the current commission structure. I think Alan has touched on one, uh, the issue of uh, unhoused people, of mental illness. Uh, there's also an issue of uh, tenants' rights and affordable housing, which I know planning deals with, but um, you know, it's it's the biggest issue right now in California. Uh, so I think those are key things. I think a social services commission uh, that encompasses those would be uh, a helpful commission for the city. I, I think it would bring uh, a voice about those issues that maybe is not right now being heard adequately in city hall or by existing commissions. Uh, the other thing I think that is needed uh, with climate change uh, becoming more of an issue uh, and with the need to basically change the energy system uh, in whole to deal with this, uh, not just city facilities, but in the community and the business establishments, uh, I, I think energy is a crucial topic uh, that should be dealt with by commissions in South Pasadena. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Janet Braun. Good evening. Hi. Um, I just wanted to, my, my comment is really more um, global and macro, which is that I think we need to take a more strategic view toward commissions. In my mind, I know we've had various comments about, you know, uh, not tonight, but just over the last several years about maybe this commission, maybe not that commission, commission ABC. And I guess my personal feeling would be to be, to kind of back up a minute and just say, maybe um, what are the, um, what are the topics um, and the subject matter for which we need commissions and that we, or that we would really like, not commissions, but what we would really like community input on. Like what are those subject areas and how do they line up with the strategic plan of the city? Because um, I think we have a lot of very talented uh, residents in South Pasadena, but I would kind of look at those areas that we want community input and decide which ones of those areas need to have a commission with Brown Act coverage and city staff included and which areas could be more advisory in nature. And the one commission and or committee that might not need Brown Act is economic development. And that would be one of my, um, one of my suggestions. But I, I think we need a little bit more strategic look at what we're trying to do. I think community input is critical in this city, but I, 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 that's the way I would approach it. Thanks. Thank you, Janet. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on this question that we have on the screen? Mary, I see a gentleman with a blue shirt. It's a phone number, not a name. I apologize, sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, can we unmute him? 
Uh, sure. Let me go ahead and look at the participants. Oh, there you go. Sir, if you could unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, hello, Perfect. hi. Thank hi, you hi. for joining, hi. Okay, uh, I didn't see the prompt and I wasn't sure how this is. This is my first time in my life I do Zoom. So here it is. I really called because I have a big beef with one commission that should be abolished. That commission is the review board. Uh, basically, the, in, the landscape architect, the architect, and they have their own minds. And what they are doing is they, they, uh, they, re they review and they propose what they think things should be. In the old days, if you, wanted to, uh, if you wanted to paint your house in purple, they would say no because it wasn't appropriate. And I agree. However, I, had three, I have three bad experiences with three different people with the board of uh, review. First of all, when I had to, when I remodeled my house, I proposed to put beams instead of a uh, uh, flagstone. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. So I, I showed them, I, I sent about 10 pictures of properties in my neighborhood that have beams, uh, vertical and horizontal beams uh, in the front of the house, yet they did not accept it. So that necessitated me to hire an architect, pay some money, and uh, a lot of money actually, and then do something else that you can't even see. Another case was another, uh, another architect that when I put my pergola, he said, well, I think that it's kind of boring to look from the street because the wood beams, uh, the, the slots on the, on the roof of the pergola are all even. So I think you should do something different to cut them. So I cut like, you know, um, the, there were two by sixes, so I cut to some of them by two by three and two by six. But anyway, so look interesting. Guess what? You can't see it on the street because now my plants are covering the pergola. So that's another issue that, so it looks nice on the street. What do I care? It's my house. And the last one was a landscape architect that came and sat in my house and he said, oh, you know, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that, you should cut the hedge so people will see your beautiful design. Hey, the hedge was, number one, it was safety. Number two, it was nice, I like it. Why should I cut the hedge so people will see the, the little flagstone that I put? So I really think that the, uh, the, the review board commission really should not be there, it's just not necessary. When somebody submit a plan to remodel the property, they go through the planning commission, they go through the building commission and our building uh, department and they decide. When they decide, that's it. They know what, what is right and what is wrong. But how the place look like, I don't think it has to be reviewed by, the, uh, by a special committee just unless the city would like to have um, some professional people on committee to get involved. The, they can get involved in other ways. So that, that's one of the committees. Then another committee that I have a, a beef with, it's the uh, public, work, not pub, uh, is it public works, I guess? They always hire say, engineers and lawyers and all this stuff. What about regular people from the community? They have opinions, they have knowledge. I mean, it doesn't have to be a lawyer or, or, or engineer that sit on those committees. And what happened is, Less, these people are continuing sitting on those committees and uh, no one else can get onto those committees. So I think that uh, the, the, the city should, the council should look into that to, uh, to uh, abolish the board of review and, uh, and adjust the, uh, the membership on uh, the public works commission. And you know that I quite often go and I have complaints about public work issues that just to do things better for the city. But uh, we regular citizens have words, have, have opinions and would like to express them. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lomo. I really appreciate it. The next person I have is Bianca Richards. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I think I just wanna uh, go back and piggyback on a little bit what Janet Braun was talking about. Um, I would like to hear uh, maybe uh, a definition or uh, something historical about the difference between a commission, 
a board and an advisory um, because we do have uh, commissions, we have boards, we have advisory, but, and I, I, know, I know sometimes maybe where we're not getting enough input is because of the Brown Act. So I know with the commissions, yeah, it's very specific who you can talk to, who you can't talk to with the boards, but with the advisory. Um, and so I, I, I think I just wanna hear a little bit more about what's the difference um, is there like one is more important than another? Um, and that's that's my comment. Thank you, Bianca. And Betty? Um, I, I just was um, highlighting a thumbs up for Bianca and Janet in, in what they were saying regarding the differences between advisory and um, commissions, advisory, um, um, uh, uh, and so it is so important, I think, for the city to have public input, to have input from its citizens, um, and, you know, we maybe commissions are not necessarily the, the way to go all the time, um, but I, I'd hate to see the public input uh, be cut off by not having either commissions or boards or advisory committees. Thank you, Betty. Joanne Knuckles. Hi, um, I, I wasn't gonna say anything on, on this prompt, but I wanted to agree with what Odom said. I feel with the pandemic and, uh, the, and trying to get projects done in town, I and others feel more and more separated from City Hall. I mean, that was the fault of the pandemic. But this process of trying to get a permit or an inspection and everything, I find is very difficult and needs to be made a lot easier. And as far as uh, one, one thing that um, might be looked into is making and would facilitate more community involvement, I think better discussions for then advice to um, the city council is to have the meetings less formal. You know, when the commission is sitting there in the council chambers and they're up there and you get your two minutes to talk, it, it sort of hampers any productive dialogue about an issue. And um, so that's one thing I think we need to consider is less formal commissions. And I'm just gonna say my piece that I was gonna say because I wanted to go start cooking my dinner but uh, I was on the commission first, the Freeway and Transportation Commission from 87 to 93. We did not have staff help. We had a chairman who worked with the city clerk to post the agenda, you know, work, and the staff. But the chairman of the commission posted the agenda. We'd have a secretary to take the minutes and everything. Towards the end of that six years was when there were starting to be more staff help for the commissions but it was more of a, I felt at the time, and then later on with some of the other commissions, it's more like a control issue. And it's not helpful and it sort of hampers the <clears throat> dialogue again. So I think there could be either going back to that format where the chairman and the secretary of the commission does a little bit more and lessens the burden of the staff and or some sort of a hybrid because that the reason for getting rid of commissions is because it's too much of a burden on the staff. Well, I think it's just, it's evolved into that and it doesn't have to be that because there are enough people on the commissions from before when we didn't have staff help that could help maybe uh, work out something so it's less burdensome and more productive as far as advisory to the council. And I think every commission that we have has a place. And uh, I think we need to consider how to make it less burdensome on the staff and more helpful to the staff. Who And then both the, the commission or, or committees, if that's what you're gonna end up with on some of them, have better advice that goes to the city council so they can make a decision. Thank you, Joanne. Is there anyone else that has a comment on this prompt? Just checking. Oh, um, 
Oh, Alan's just giving a thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, I just want to come back. Um, another commission that I think would be worthy of adding, but could put a lot of work on staff would be something akin to a good government or little Hoover commission. Just we've had in the last couple of years, two reorganizations of the finance department, two reorganizations or, or reviews of the police department, uh, planning and building. Uh, and as I said, we, we've been there before, we're going through this again. Um, and I think if you talk to people on some of the different commissions, uh, finance is one that comes to mind. Uh, MTIC would be another. Most of the commissions have got some very talented and experienced professionals working there who have expert knowledge from outside the city that might be able to help city departments run better. Um, but the commissions don't have the opportunity to give that type of feedback. Uh, but something like a good government commission that could kind of just look at how the entire city is running, uh, maybe be advisory to the mayor might be uh, helpful. Thank you, Alan. And Odom? Oh, sorry. Odom, can you unmute? Sorry. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, not a problem. So I'd like to pick up on what Joanne Knuckles was uh, just saying. Uh, this topic is bit, a bit broadened uh, since we started it. And I just wanted to point out that I believe that much of what we turn in at a commission level has become make work for staff. And that in fact is why it seems so backbreaking when staff gets assigned to do a staff report. For instance, if you're doing a uh, uh, either design review board or um, cultural heritage commission or planning commission report, frequently there will be uh, conditions added to it that are in uh, a, a mini plan check review uh, by fire department, by public works, by other departments other than the planning commission. And you could just suffice to say that the, the condition is it's subject to complete review by all other departments uh, when it uh, uh, should the project be in uh, entitlements be approved rather than, you know, five, 10, 20, 30 pages sometimes of conditions from all of these departments that take up an enormous amount of time and they're completely irrelevant because you're not trying to get a permit, you're just trying to get an understanding of what would be allowed to be built so that you can then do the, the uh, construction documents as an architect or an engineer. And there is far too much paperwork, which is hugely burdensome, I think, on uh, staff in multiple departments. And I, I think that that would be uh, a, a way to streamline this so that we don't have to make this such a paper chase. Thank you. Thank you, Odom, so much. And just to let you guys know, um, that was our first prompt. We have a total of five prompts that we're going to be asking you this evening. So I'm going to turn it um, back over to staff and we're going to go on to the second question and then we'll start the next round of question and answers. So Mary and Dom, I'll turn it over to you for the second prompt. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for that feedback. We're going to go ahead and go to the second prompt, um, which asks, what are some strengths or accomplishments of the commissions or boards that you have been a part of or attended meetings for. And again, go ahead and raise your hands and we'll call on you and get started. Okay, Joanne, Joanne Knuckles. Well, I'm gonna talk about the freeway <laughs> <laughs> because that was something totally uh, you know, unusual that was dumped on our small city. And that's why the, the council needed help because it was, uh, <laughs> To, to pull you know, the Freeway and Transportation Commission to kind of get advice because this was a pretty big thing for our small little city fighting the state of California and all of our neighbors and everything else. And we're still dealing with the effects of killing the freeway. So it's been, we're on to 70 or 75 years of this. And you have to um, be flexible enough that if something unusual or out of the ordinary comes up like that, 
that the city's able to handle it. And we've got great uh, people in town with all sorts of expertise. And if there's some way to, um, I, I think it would strengthen the council and it'd be easier for them to have discussions, to make a decision if they had a better idea what more of the community thought. And if there's some way to uh, do that through the commissions or committees or whatever, I think it would be helpful for everybody so you don't end up with any torches and pitchfork meetings at the city council level because something was proposed that really wasn't vetted properly through some sort of um, city uh, group. Thank you, Joanne. Odom, you're next. Uh, yes, I would just like to say that um, I uh, am very proud of the record of the Cultural Heritage Commission uh, Council and uh, working hand in hand with the uh, South Pasadena Preservation Foundation to continue to landmark houses and districts, because I believe in the end that will be the salvation of our city to have some uh, control over um, uh, uh, future uh, projects that are otherwise essentially taken out of local control by state of California regulations on, for instance, uh, affordable housing, RENA numbers, conversions of uh, historic uh, structures like garages and barns into ADUs. We, we stand half a chance if we are diligent at that. And I, I believe that that's been a real success for uh, those commissions in particular and the council. Thank you, Odom. Betty, you're next. And then after Betty, I'm going to call on Janet. So go ahead, Betty. Um, rather than speaking to specific accomplishments of, of a commission, I just would like to say that for every commission meeting that I've gone to and, and I have been a part of, um, it, it, it astounds me how much the residents bring to the commissions, the, the knowledge, the, the, the history, the, because lots of times in our city, we have new people coming in, we have new, um, new staff, we have um, wonderful, right now, a wonderful new city manager and deputy city manager, but, but they don't have the history of the city. They don't ha have a, a deep understanding of the city. And that's what the commissions bring to the city. They, they, they have lived here, many of them. I, I have lived in the city for 47 years. Um, we, we have seen the changes. We know what the residents are dealing with. We talk to neighbors, to people. So we're bringing a lot of knowledge um, to a commission. And um, plus we just have very, very talented people in our city. And I think that's what is brought to the commissions. Thank you, Betty, so much. And Janet, I'll call on you. Okay, thank you. And I, I would echo all of Betty's comments. I think that in a city of 25,000 people, we have a lot of talent in this city. And, and, and with that, a lot of people who really care. So I think the key is gonna be finding ways to harness that, you know, bring in that talent and, and kind of work together um, with the, the people and with city staff, because I think that residents can be hugely helpful. Um, a couple of just quick comments on two commissions that I've had the pleasure of serving. One is public safety, which I think, um, and hopefully Brian would agree, and Paul Riddle, that uh, we work very, very um, hard to try to like help and support city uh, police and fire. And I think one of that big accomplishments I saw that commission bring was uh, two accomplishments is, is starting the CERT program. And two, I would say like realizing that um, frankly, the city police and fire needed the commission's help in bringing to council the fact that we really needed to set aside funds for a new emergency operations center. So that was a very good collaborative effort. And I think that all the commissions and or boards committees need to be more, need to be very collaborative. The planning commission on which I currently serve We've had a lot of activity, and I know John Lisek was on here. He's the current chair, and John's done a fabulous job. Um, we've had a lot with the RENA allocation and the zoning ordinances, ADUs, the um, you know affordable housing. Um, there's been a lot thrown at us, and I think we have really tried to listen to residents, work with staff, 
and come up with really well thought through solutions. And so I think that commission is, I mean, I'm on that with a lot of really great people. And one of the examples of a collaboration is when we appealed the RENA number on housing um, allocated to South Pasadena, we formed a subcommittee with the then current uh, planning director. And we brought in, you know, a couple citizens to help us with that effort. And it was a really great example of how we can work together. So thank you. Thank you, Janet, very much. Is there anyone else that would like to raise their hand to comment on this question? Oh, Sally, go ahead. Hi. Yes, I, I, I don't think there's any question that the commissions um, have added so much to the city uh, over the years in every area that uh, they work in. The question is whether our small city without resources can really sustain this. And I know uh, a number of people say that the, the residents can handle the tasks, but um, what the staff does, the responsibilities are really onerous and the deadlines are for unforgiving. And I know for a fact that volunteers are not going to be able to um, comply with all the requirements uh, that Brown Act commissions um, require of us. So um, I think it's how, how can we go into that direction of having advisory groups or temporary groups? I think that's the only way we can, we can do it. It's not su sustainable right now. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. The next person up is Eric Dunlap. Hi, good evening, everyone. And my name is Eric Dunlap, and I am a second year commissioner on the MTIC. And um, this commission was my first introduction, really, to the city of South Pasadena and working with the city. Um, I, I think it's wise that the city kind of take a critical look at this as someone who works for a local agency in the region. Um, I understand kind of the burden it can be on staff. and and. As someone who works closely with people who have worked for the city of South Pasadena, I know um, the demand that it is on staff, and sometimes they might look for jobs that are a little, a little less taxing, um, you know, just because um, they're doing so much and they're they're managing so many requests, so many projects, and and really they're doing everything. Um, but as far as like the commissions go, I think there is a technical expertise that a lot of the commissioners bring. That's that. It's already been commented on. I know on our commission, since some of us are engineers and do this for public agencies, um, we're, re we're reviewing reports um, at almost like a staff level occasionally and making engineering um, recommendations and, and suggestions because we do this in our um, nine to five. And, and also I will say that there is, um, I, I wouldn't want to lose the value of having um, more public member more, more the public being able to speak into um, community projects and programs. I know that in my own agency, we spend significant funds hiring um, communications consultants and community engagement consultants, um, that it is kind of nice with the city of South Pasadena that that um, process and those rhythms are kind of already built in, whether that be a monthly commission meeting or every um, couple months. So um, I kind of wanted to comment on that, but um, I certainly understand um, the burden that the commissions are on staff. And I hope that we can kind of work together to reduce that burden. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, so much. Um, I'm looking at the list. I don't see any more hands. So I'm gonna ask staff to move on to the third question. Perfect, let's go on to prompt three. I apologize, Tamara. Can we go back to one more? I think if there's a gentleman who wants to speak, he's on the phone raising his hand. Yes. Oh, okay. It's me. <coughs> oh, can you hear go me? Ahead, sir. Okay, um, I would I would like you to know that about I don't know 15, 18 years ago when I served on the Public Safety Commission, we did establish the CERT, we did establish the um, the uh, uh, gee, I don't remember what the other lady mentioned, but anyway, uh, we we did that and we also had a oh um, uh, oh no what is it called Operation uh, Office or whatever they call OAC or OEC the uh, emergency EOC. So we did establish it, but over the year it went by the worst wayside and now I think the ham radio group is taking over. But I do have a problem with a couple of, with the 
concept of commission. Um, I attended the two, two commission, the Public Work Commission and the Animal Commission. Uh, Animal is gone, I'm glad they did. And the Public Work Commission was great. I, I have good relationship with some of the people there, but the problem is that when a citizen go in front of a commission, they should get a reply or response or action, uh, the kind of action that will take place. For example, if somebody comes in and say, oh, there is a uh, uh, pothole in front of my house, um, you don't know if they're going, to, or maybe even an issue that need to go to council, you don't get a response, it just get buried. I was ahead of my time. Maybe, oh, here is something for you guys. Put on fire. For really getting our commission. So we bought a house three years ago in South Pasadena and um, we hired a great architect who does great local projects, tried to design a historic house and we put in an application for the CHC. It took us about four months of meetings with planning before they would even allow us to see the CHC. The first planner said, oh, it needs to be shorter. Second, then that planner left. We got a second planner and said, oh, you know, we, I don't like this. I don't like this. That planner left. And then we had to get a, a get a, a historic uh, survey. And that his, the person we hired for that said, your first plan fits in best. You need to do this. You should do this. And so I actually told planning, you know, we don't care what you say. We want to go to the CHC with this thing. So we I had to pay for about three redesigns, very costly redesigns from my architect because of the planning department before we could even see the CHC department. In the past, it used to be that you could present something as an off the record, hey, here is an informational thing, what do you think? Without staff actually caring about the project to CHC and planning. And I believe that that is something that South Pasadena should go back to. So it could be a 20 minute presentation, here are our thoughts, you know, so that we know what to expect from the Cultural Heritage Commission instead of having to do a thing where you ask planning what they think the Cultural Heritage Commission will do and you're not allowed to see the Cultural Heritage Commission before you get through planning. So that, that was my experience. It cost me tens of thousands of dollars. And I have a neighbor who's undergoing that exact same experience today. Thank you, Josh, very much. Um, Odom? Yes, can, again, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes. Great. Uh, I just would like to echo that and uh, and at the same time acknowledge that the city is making great strides to clear backlog. But we had uh, also on a number of projects in town, the experience of having two and even three planners before we were through, you know, over uh, a, a year plus uh, delays in getting to bat. And we used to be able to go to the design review board or the Cultural Heritage Commission and present informally. And again, it gets back to my uh, conversation about how structured it is when you're trying to do it virtually, as opposed to coming to the commission and doing it in a less formal way and getting up and essentially getting a straw poll answer, which is a, a legitimate way to uh, understand better and so that you don't spend so much of the client's money redesigning, redesigning, redesigning. Thank you, Odom. Is there anyone else that has comments for this prompt? Alan? Piggybacking on what both Josh and Odom just said, uh, there are many opportunities where two or more commissions might meet jointly, such as planning and cultural heritage. Uh, when I was on the Public Safety Commission, there were times that we wanted to have joint meetings with for term limits on some of the major commissions. The Planning Review Board and, board and MTIC are all high level, um, powerful commissions. And quite frequently, I noticed that people go from one to another to another to another. And there actually are a lot of great applicants here. Um, the person who sp spoke earlier from MTIC, he had a great resume. I read through it when he was applying. And um, Baltazar on the planning commission, he just moved here two years ago and he has an amazing um, resume in history. And I just feel that, you know, for some of these commissions, there should be a lifetime, okay, you could do 12 total years combined on these four commissions. 
And I just think it's something that should be considered so that people with good experience have a chance to get on these commissions instead of the same person being six years in one commission, six years in another commission, six years in another commission, six years. That's my statement. Great. Thank you, Josh. Is there anyone else? Okay, staff, I think we are ready for the next prompt. Okay, great. Let's move on to prompt four. So is additional training or support for commissioners or staff liaisons needed to improve our public meeting process? And I'll open up the floor. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, we have gone through um, training on the Brown Act and on uh, state ethics law and practice. Um, and I think that's, but I think what could be added to that, that would be helpful for many commissioners, not all, but is <clears throat> some sort of training that gives them a primer on how the city functions, how the budget is developed and passed, how a strategic plan is developed and passed, general plan, what the city has power over, what it doesn't, uh, how it uh, works with other levels of government, such as special districts, regional agencies, and the county and the state, uh, because it is complicated. And I think a lot of our commissioners uh, that have not worked in government particularly or followed government necessarily as part of their jobs uh, could benefit from that. Uh, I, I think uh, there are times when there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of questions and, and time consumed uh, going over things that are that are fairly basic that uh, that this type of training would prevent from uh, from having to deal with. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Bianca. Yeah, I, my uh, comment goes to uh, prompt three and four. Has has the city have you guys gotten any? Uh, feedback from residents why maybe they're not wanting to join commissions or boards. I mean, is because maybe we need to listen to, I mean, there's what, uh, what there's 27 people here and I recognize a lot of us and we're the ones who really go to a lot of the meetings and speak up and have a voice, but there's what, I mean, how many thousands of people are in this city um, and like what like Josh was saying, that there's some really good people in the city, but why aren't they wanting to join commissions or boards or committees? So it would be interesting to um, maybe take it from that angle. What is it that uh, prevents you from wanting to get onto these boards, commissions, or committees? That's my comment. Thank you, Bianca. Alan? Oh, Alan, um, I think you're still muted, sorry. Time for a really positive comment. A couple of years ago, the city started having an annual commissioner Congress. Uh, and I, I think this was the second year I was on a commission and that really made me feel connected to what all of the other commissions and commissioners were doing. Um, all of the department heads, got up, they spoke about what their departments were, uh, the mayor, the city manager got up. That was a very positive thing. And I would definitely recommend continuing that. Is there anyone else that has, oh, Shlomo, go ahead. Oh, Shlomo. Um... You can unmute. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Josh made a very important comment because uh, those are the same people that are going, uh, uh, going from one committee commission to another. And I don't want to fault anyone, but my feeling is that it is friends bring friends. And that's answer to the previous lady that answered to us why people do not, um, do not serve other more people serve on the committee on the commissions. Uh, it's up to the quote, quote, mayor to uh, appoint a commission member. And 
if other people do, people that are appointed for the board commission and then I'm clear there is a staff turnover really to get to the key uh, issue with our city. And because there is a pretty substantial loss of institutional knowledge, I believe that really good and effective board members and commissioners have, are asked repeatedly by electeds to re-up or to switch. It's, I don't think a desire of uh, people to, to stay too long at the party uh, uh, as much as it is the city really needing help and insight with the particular- We're trying to reach a consensus on something that is ultimately either out of our hands, like it's a staff decision or a council decision. And so I think it would be a lot um, quicker if it was almost just like, we're providing our input on this, but we don't have to reach any sort of consensus. Um, when we try to reach a consensus, sometimes it can go on um, hours. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Do we have any other comments? Oh, Bianca. Yeah, I just have uh, one more comment. Um, I'm currently on the uh, library board of trustees and I know the first couple of years, it was a real learning curve for me. I mean, so, and I, I think, um, so trying to keep the, trying to keep a commissioner on for another uh, set of years is a very good idea because by the time I've gotten up to speed, I think, okay, now I feel confident, I feel comfortable. I understand action items, discussion items, the organizational structure of the library, how it relates to this and that, the finances, but it, it, but it does take a while. So I think that needs to be um, communicated um, in, in advance that it, there is a big learning curve. And for, and for some of us, then it is a good idea then to go on to another term if possible. Thank you, Bianca. Is there anyone else for this question? If not, I'm gonna, oh, sorry, um, Lawrence, Lawrence's iPhone. Tamara, thank you. It's uh, Larry Abelson. Oh, hi, Larry. Hi. Hi hello. there. Uh, I want to thank you, Mary and Dom, for, for hosting this. And um, just to this specific prompt, a, a couple of things came to mind. One is um, sometimes it seems that the public isn't aware of when all of these commissions are meeting. Um, and often I have to be I have to reach out to people and let them know, hey, we're meeting in a couple of weeks. You know, if you want to come provide public comment or this issue is going to be the agenda on the agenda, be sure to come or, 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 or listen in. Um, so if there is a better way to publicize um, commission meetings, whether it's the city, the city scoop or any other uh, mechanism, it might be helpful in terms of getting more people to participate um, uh, in the commission meetings. And then uh, the other thought I had is uh, having a better understanding up front, maybe at the beginning of each year, of what, what resources are going to be available, um, uh, staff and otherwise, to support us so that uh, we understand what, what we'll be able to accomplish in the coming year. Because I, I think a lot of times what's happened with us is we've come up with a, a number of uh, proposed projects or programs or initiatives, and then we get uh, a little frustrated because uh, they aren't implemented. Um, and it's it's simply due to the fact that the staff does not have the resources to do it, or that the city council has to make a decision to throw more resources at something. So just from a process perspective, I think uh, those two things should be kept in mind. Um, and um, the only other thing I wanted to say is, you know, we, we've come up both the current commission, which is the Mobility and Transportation Infrastructure Commission and its predecessor, Public Works, um, has worked with the prior Freeway and Transportation Commission and others to come up with um, various projects, you know, from the from the small end traffic signals and all way stops to uh, lists of projects to be implemented with tens of millions of dollars. And I um, I think all of us on the current commission and prior commissions can be very proud of that and proud of staff for all the support they've given us. Um, but if there's some way, and then I'll, and then I'll, I'll end sort of tying back to what Janet said up front, 
Um, I think it would be great if the city could make a decision. These are the commissions that we want to support, right? And provide all the resources necessary so that they can do their, they can do their jobs. They can uh, listen to the community, um, make suggestions and staff will be there to, to implement them. Um, Cause the way it is now, I think they're just, there's so many commissions on top of all the other work the staff has to do that it, they have very little time to actually act on things. So thank you, those are my comments. Thank you, Larry. And next is Ellen Wood. Yeah, hi, um, I'm on the Finance Commission and I just want to put in the fact that we have staff at our meetings all the time and they are incredible. They're just so good. I think that um, I hate taking all their time, but they are very effective. We could maybe drop one of the staff if, if it feels like there's too much staff need for the commissions, but it really makes a difference. And, and I don't know, I, I think that there's one, oh, one other thing I wanna say that's not on this topic. Um, with regard to the uh, Congress, that wasn't a bad thing. The only problem I have with it is that it, what happened is it supplanted the um, reports to city council and therefore the commissions no longer give their direct reports to the city council at the city council meetings, which would inform a whole lot more of the public what the commissions are doing. So I think that should be added back. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Is there anyone else with a response for this prompt? Me. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I, I would like to tell you a little story that last maybe 15 years ago uh, started. Uh, and that was a good thing what we did. Uh, when the school board decided to build a new gym for the middle school, uh, they just came up with design, which of course was not working. Well, it was just a waste of money for what they decided. And somehow, I don't know, I went to every meeting, school board meeting, and finally we decided to have a round table in which uh, people that had interest in building the new gym uh, could talk to, to a school board member freely. Uh, there was no three minutes uh, uh, statute. Um, talk to the architect, explain to the architect why things have to be done one way or the other. And eventually this is what we have to see because I went to every meeting and I'm taking credit for that. This is why we have such a beautiful gym at the school. Now, why skipping, jumping forward to the commission meeting? I think when a member of the community is attending the commission meeting, uh, they should put a little time for round table. Same way where free talk, explaining, three minutes tell him and walking away, it's not working. I think by spending 15, 20 minutes as a uh, round table, uh, both the citizen will benefit, the commission will benefit, and uh, we'll go from there instead of the public comments. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Shlomo. Looking at the list, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our fifth prompt, and I'll turn it over to Mary. Perfect, I believe this is our last one. Okay, so do you have any other suggestions or input on improving the public meeting process in the city of South Pasadena? Anyone? Um, Odom, go ahead. Yes, to put a bow on everything that we've been talking about, I think that you're going to find after you do this that there's all kinds of great ways to streamline if that is the goal, purpose, and uh, slant of what uh, this um, study is trying to find because you can find answers on a sort of a, a, a pre-agendized uh, 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 item uh, in support. You know, it's, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, by, um, essentially a bias of, of opinion. Uh, but really what it boils down to is whatever you do, uh, the more you cut out public input, the greater the crisis will arise because this town is nothing if not passionately involved. And you will find that it will work just fine until the first big issue comes along. 
And then as Joanne Knuckles says, people show up literally with pitchforks and uh, hot firebrands. And you've not seen uh, a, a, an explosion of the populace until you've tried to roll something over and uh, it, you do it at your own peril in this town. We're famous for uh, digging in at the 11th and a half hour and stopping things that really ought not to happen. And it's a horrible way to govern. And I would hope that we could reach a compromise where we work around the margins to reduce staff time, make some things more ministerial and generally try to um, uh, make things a little simpler in the form of applications and make things a little less formal at the meetings, but cutting out commissions, boards and committees that uh, people advise on and in behind the scenes give sound advice with their professional opinions. I think that you uh, cut them out entirely at your, at your own hazard. And that's, that's how I'll, I'll leave that. It's a generalization, but you can read between the lines about uh, my, my thoughts on how it, it, it is in this town. And I think that's actually the, the, the good side of a double-edged sword. Thank you, Odom. Bill Kelly? Uh, thank you. Uh, just to go back to some of the discussion at the beginning, uh, there was a time even when I first served on uh, a city commission that the meetings were conducted less formally and more time was given to residents to, uh, to talk, frankly, uh, and express themselves. And I understand that that doesn't necessarily mean short meetings. So one, one possibility, uh, I think, to streamline things uh, is, well, there can be formal meetings, is, is periodic uh, informal meetings that are more discussion oriented, more like community roundtables. And, and these could be uh, held with uh, one commission or, you know, there could be several commissions, you know, that, that could, uh, could uh, spon sponsor these or, or hold them, um, you know, on different topics that might be of interest to the community or that the, the city is looking to get feedback on from a big picture perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Is there anyone else? If there's no one else on this, oh, sorry, Josh Albertson, go ahead. Unmute video. Um, going back to one of my other points, um, something that I think the city could do is like uh, we have uh, electric and the uh, we have a couple of bike things coming to the city. Um, we ought to consider having someone set up a stand. Well, someone's the city set up a stand at these things. Talk about hey, these are the commissions. That's what they do. Consider signing up and collecting people's names and email address for possible commissions. You know, there's a lot of and even um, the farmers market. There's a lot of uh, events in South Pasadena um, that happen with vastly different demographics than what I see at as the commissioners here in South Pasadena. I think South Pasadena needs to do some outreach to those events and try to find other people who are good, competent people who would consider serving on the commissions, so that we're not you know, it's not the same people in five, five applications for five things. Thank you, Josh. Janet, Janet Braun. I just want to quickly follow up and someone else already made this comment, but um, you know, when, when people come to the commission meetings and they have general comments, general public comment that's on an item, not on the agenda. Um, sometimes we hear the same comment many times from the same resident. And I think it, it's sort of, I don't have the solution, but you know, somehow we need to capture what they may have a valid um, issue. And I don't think we have a process in place for that. So um, I, I just think that needs to be a little well thought through of how we deal with those general comments that come before the commissions. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our deputy city manager with a final slide, and then we're going to go ahead and take off the share screen so we can see all of you and we'll have some closing comments from staff. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dominica. Thank you, Tamara. Mary, can I go ahead and get that last slide back up, please? Oh, sorry. Let me go ahead and share it right now.
Thank you, Mary. So we wanted to make sure that you had our team's contact information. Uh, of course, you have the opportunity and thank you all so much for, for tuning in tonight and for sharing your thoughts uh, with us. Uh, I wanted to express a sincere thank you for tuning in and sharing your thoughts and your frustrations and your opinions and your suggestions. I am one of the newest members to this agency and uh, the thoughtful histories and the input you share tonight will be part of the consideration, not only for this commission study session and discussion, but so much more. And I wanna share that with you, that it's gonna further our efforts in communications and outreach to our community, to our processes, to our training of staff and appointed officials and more citywide. On a personal note, I look forward to working with you and serving the community. And I appreciate this input session being the start of my efforts here. With that, you have our contact information on the screen. Of course, we're available to all of you if you have additional comments or ideas or thoughts that you'd like to share with us on this or any other topics. Um, and I wanna reiterate that the survey for this topic is still live through Friday. So if there's anyone else that you'd like to nudge to be more involved with this or reach out to our team to let their uh, opinions and ideas and suggestions be known, we appreciate your help in getting the word out on this one. Um, and at this time, I'd like to turn the session over to City Manager Tafarian. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I was intentionally quiet throughout the evening because um, this was intended to be a listening session. And I was listening and taking a lot of notes. Um, there are a few comments I'd like to um, address because I think there were some really good comments that were made. Um, and I'm gonna address these comments comprehensively coming from not the premise that I'm the city manager in South Pasadena, but I want to address them with the premise that I'm a 21 year public sector employee that's worked in five different cities, um, who's been exposed to different types of commissions, committees, boards. Um, so there are more general comments. And um, first and foremost, uh, the, the reason we are doing this because when we have the study session with council, we want to be able to present our city council our findings, both the summary of the survey results, um, both the summary of the comments we've heard from all of you. We will be providing very detailed analysis of what industry practices are um, for a city of our size, other cities, how many commissions they have, in addition to um, how much work goes into preparing the commissions and the capacity issues that the organization is facing. I think um, pretty much everyone that's on, that I'm seeing on my screen knows that the organization has gone through different sets of staff. Um, our turnover has been significant. And um, just in the last three weeks, we've onboarded nine new staff members. That's a lot. Um, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing because that means that we are filling the vacancies we've had for quite, a, quite some time. But there is a learning curve. The learning curve involves bringing staff on board. I know several of, you mentioned, several, of you men, several of you mentioned the importance of having the history and the background. I couldn't agree with you more. So there's some work that we have to do. There's a few things I'd like to specifically um, address. The pandemic has made things very, very complicated. Um, at a staff level, hosting meetings in a virtual format, hosting them in a hybrid format is so much more work. Um, we all miss the days of having the, all of the in-person outreach efforts, having the charrettes, having the listening sessions, but doing it all, whether it's in the chamber, whether it's in a conference room, this has been very challenging. In the last month alone, um, our organization has been hit with a significant number of COVID cases. It's actually impacted our operations significantly. Um, we've had to go to back to a hybrid work model in order to protect our own staff and our community. Um, so we, we're not happy with having to make all these changes. We're trying to be as flexible as we can to address the needs, the ever-changing needs of the pandemic. Um, we are looking forward to that time, hopefully somewhere in the near future where we can go back to everything being in person. I will also share that we've also had residents who've actually liked some of the format we've, uh, we've also taken on. We've had residents um, who've complimented the fact that because some things have gone to a hybrid, 
those who are working and can't get to meetings in person. It's given them a chance to um, be able to log in, provide comments. So we ourselves are trying to figure out how all this is gonna work and trying to figure out how we can continue the engagement efforts. Um, I do think that there's a lot of room for improvement on our end as city staff when it comes to engagement. Um, we are working towards uh, streamlining how we do things, how we can improve um, all of our operations, whether it's how we bring staff reports to how we post information, to what level of engagement we do. Um, we recognize that there's actually um, opportunities there to improve. And I certainly hope that this process we're going through just on this topic of commissions and committees, if anything shares with all of you where we're headed, um, you will be seeing more engagement. Um, I think that's an area, not only do we need to improve, we need to increase. Um, there is an area that we will be working on with our own staff and helping train them to do a better job of managing our commissions. Um, those of us coming from cities, other cities, we'd like to think we can bring some better practices to our organization and help improve um, how we at a staff level manage our commissions. For example, um, in December, the city council actually approved our new five-year strategic plan. I know I heard a few of you mention that, that's a tool that needs to now be shared with all of our commissions. So as all of you are working at the commission level, you have an opportunity to get a sense of where the council is headed. And as our commissions are working on their work plans, we need to do a better job of making sure commissions are aware of how those work plans can be aligned with the strategic plan and also be aligned with our fiscal year process. Because um, I will say of all of the communities I've worked in, South Pasadena has phenomenal commissions. The level of expertise that our commissioners have are superb. Um, we really do have industry experts. Um, we have people who bring so much to the table and I think we need to figure out ways to maximize that. Um, there were some comments about uh, how, um, how much work is put into staff reports. Um, I know there's been a group of uh, folks we've been meeting with separately to talk about ways we can improve that. Um, I do think for some development projects, there are ways we could do project previews that simply are just that for some of the commissions where it's an opportunity for the applicant to present a preview. Um, and, and that's all it is. It's just a, a simple preview without going too far down the line. Um, we are, so Dominica, this is her third week, um, and I will quickly introduce her. I wasn't planning on it because uh, this is not the forums, but since we have so many faces here, um, Dominica's got about 12 years of public sector experience. She's previously worked for the cities of uh, West Hollywood, uh, Glendale, Torrance, uh, most recently St. Gabriel, which is where she and I crossed paths. Um, she brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to um, South Pasadena, and she's hit the ground running. And one of the first things she's working on is improving our templates for both council meetings, commission meetings, um, and helping train our staff. So I, I certainly hope you'll start to see more of that. Um, let's see, you will be definitely seeing us increase the use of social media as a tool, um, not the only tool. And those of you who are following us on Instagram, um, you should have noticed just that in the last month, we've certainly increased how much information we're putting out, both on Instagram and also on Facebook, because we will use every tool, old school and new school. We're equal opportunity. Print works, postcards work. Um, I heard Josh mention having a table at city events. That works. Um, so you will see us using every mechanism we possibly can. Um, I heard some of you men mentioned the Commissioner Congress. Um, different versions of, done, of that are done in different cities. Um, I'm an advocate of that. If there's ways to get all of our commissioners in a room where we share the goals and the accomplishments. Um, also, there are times where we're, we have really big topics in the city that can provide an opportunity for joint meetings of certain commissions. Um, that also is a tool that I'd like to see us explore. Um, I, heard, I heard housing mentioned, um, there's so much happening with housing in the next, uh, in the next few months, um, working towards doing a state of housing, where that's a topic we can explore deeper and invite the public and our council and commissions to have an opportunity to discuss that at length. And the workload, yes, 
um, having 13 commissions creates a significant amount of workload. And um, in some of our departments, that workload leads to uh, making, uh, making staff feel like it's a constant fire drill. So looking to see how we can improve that on our end. Um, I know earlier, Bianca, in the beginning of the meeting, you asked about ways we can define commissions, committees, the roles. We will be doing that as part of our um, study session. Um, that is a study session. So um, staff will do a very detailed presentation. And I will make sure that as we do that, we will discuss um, and define what each of the groups does and how that works. I'm looking to see if I left anything out. Um, and certainly, I think the overarching theme I've heard is the ability to create better engagement and greater dialogue between the community, the commissions, council, and staff. Um, and I think that's an overarching theme. Um, I anticipate we'll hear more about that through the survey as well, only because in the seven months I've been here, I've heard that over and over again. So we will look towards improving that and sincerely want to thank all of you for joining us appreciate all of your feedback um, and look forward to talking more about this topic. Um, and ultimately council will make, uh, give us direction. And then um, if they are making any types of changes that will happen um, at a council meeting, um, encourage all of you to continue participating. I think Dom shared our contact information. And I think most of you on the screen probably have my cell phone. So feel free to send me messages and keep in touch and Thank you so much for giving us an hour and a half of your time. Um, it must be a really important topic when we've got such a great turnout. So thank you again and look forward to seeing you soon um, in a few weeks as we go deeper on this topic. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful night and most importantly, please stay healthy. Thanks. Good night. Thank you.